welcome back to EastEnders Weekly, your one and only weekly podcast all about EastEnders. This week we're discussing episodes from the 16th to the 20th of July. And before we get going, um, I think there's a public apology you need to make from last week's show. Oh, that's sad. I thought you were going to let me um, declare my apologies. No, make me... go, uh, go ahead. The, the oh. stage is yours. I'll be the bigger man, as I always am. So um, I don't know if any of you guys remember from last week, but uh, I claimed that Tina had spilt beans on a extra in mm-hmm. the Bridge Street Cafe. And I correctly said. Well, upon. Well, let's just listen back to what we said. I mean, she spilled well, be fair, beans on uh, on on a on a. It's on Max. It ta- no, 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 it wasn't on Max. It was just an incidental character. I it was no, it was no, Max. no, 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 no. It, was, it just, was Max. If it was Max, it, there would have been an issue. Trust me, it was Max because he was sat behind Ian and Masood. Nope. So yes, uh, this is when I have to eat some humble pie spilt on me by Tina. <laughs> uh, that I had made a mistake, yes. and the character. Was, was indeed Max, Max Branning, and uh, if you watch the scene, you can obviously see there was meant to be a bit. He of... did react. He went, <clears throat> lifted his hand up. There, there, was like he does. there was meant to be an interaction between the two of them, but it was cut short. Kathy, so and Kathy got in there. She did a simple mistake to make, I feel, and something that you know is a is in the grand scheme of things in the world today. Well, the... you were so adamant you were right, <laughs> and I knew that I was. So it was it was lovely. So that clears clears the air for so, the rest of this well, episode. I have to do my apology. I apologise to any listeners I may have misled by telling you information of a plot that never happened. Mm-hmm. We don't like misleading our listeners. So. Never intentionally, no. no. So this week we're going to start off with the Carters, with Tina. Her storyline continues. Yes. Main storyline for Tina. Yeah, she's back, like I say, back, hopped back from Spain mm. and got straight back into it. I mean, unfortunately, the episode started with a thunderstorm, which we're all eager to have yeah. it's not <laughs> rained for about like two months so it's like a british drought isn't it that in this country at the moment not very realistic no well and also a lot of people on twitter mentioned that even though it had rained that the whole velvet square looked dry as a bone the next yeah, morning well, it was like two hours later mm. so tina was um was up in the night she was she couldn't sleep upset. she was very upset yeah. she was reminiscing over that fateful night again mm. And um, she's sort of having breakfast and Stuart's there again, isn't he? Yeah, he's like a bad smell. He's Turns hovering up, around he's the back. Vic. And he's dropped the uh, bombshell that he wants to rent a flat in the square. And mm, it, from Jack. From Jack. <laughs> yeah, from Jack. The, the uh, real estate magnet that is Jack Branning. Um, and Mick says he'll have a word of in his ear for, mm, uh, yeah, for him, sorry. I mean, if he's moving on to the square, that means he's a full-time character. Dum, he's dum, here. Dum. That upsets Tina, so she goes to her BFF, Sonia, for some advice. Well, she asks Sonia to stop Jack. I don't know how Jack would listen to Sonia. His, um, his uncle, her uncle. Is it her uncle? Well, yeah, because Robbie says Max is Oh, his yeah, uncle. his uncle, yeah. They're all related, aren't oh, they? Of course the they are. Come yeah. on. It's, it's all, everyone knows everyone. Anyway, Sonia um, says, well, if he's not going to rent from Jack, he's going to rent from someone else. So you might as well just, you know, let by goes. But here's a good idea. Why don't you go to the police about it? <laughs> and Tina's like, I can't. I just can't. They won't listen to me. Well, it is. I don't exactly know exactly what she's going to say to the police, to be honest. She has got nothing to go on. <laughs> Well, no, but it's, it's a bit silly. <laughs> I suppose there's no evidence because it happened, what, 1994, wasn't it? Mm. A, a year and a date, I think, was given yeah, f- this week. Yeah. I mean, Sonia like, gives her this suggestion to maybe look through some old photos to get some evidence together, jog her, well, I guess. Well, jog, like, her, jog memory. her memory. Yeah. So she's doing that. She's going through her boxes and um, she, and Sonia says, just tell Mick. He needs to know. So Tanya goes, not Tanya, Tina goes over to tell um, Mick, but Stuart's already there. So Stuart's hanging around the Vic, um, like a bad smell, fixing the sink for Mick and Linda. And Mick gives him a apple core or a score, which is £20 <laughs> for the job. Um, and, you know, it's burning in Stuart's pocket. And Tina suggests perhaps they go to E20 um, because he wants to confront Stuart man to man about what she now has realised about him. <laughs> she does. So, she, constantly, she looks over the kitchen and thinks, what can I take with me? Yes. And slightly in bad taste, some people. Know well, again, there was a there was a comment on Twitter. I will read this one out now, if that's okay. Um, from a guy, uh, Darren, and he said that they've just done a whole piece on knife crime and it affects some of the family. And then we see a shot of Tina contemplating using a knife to get revenge on the bald bloke. I did like that. And you know, that's a fair point. I mean, she did eventually end she up, ends up choosing in prison <laughs> as well. Well, not in prison, but she ends up in jail for the night. 
Well, she does, but later. that's a few days later. She um, <laughs> she ends up taking the corkscrew, um, mm. but where she ends up positioning the corkscrew, uh, she'd you know probably be better off with maybe a, a nutcracker <laughs> or something like that. But she's threatening Stuart and she's saying, I know what happened that night. I know it was you. Mm. Um, and Stuart just basically tries to calm the situation. Yeah, he sort of says... he. Gets the weapon off her, doesn't he? Like, really easily. Well, he says, he, yeah. He, he, there's but, a camera there. He says, she like, looks there. up and she just takes it. <laughs> yeah, she's very sick, just, Tina. She's got the attention, but she's, you know, yeah, she's quite young at heart. On. She is. Um, and he says he's not going to admit something like that. And then there was a short pause when he suddenly realised he's, mm, hang on, maybe I've landed myself in it. And so mm-hmm. then he says, well, not something I've, I've not done. Um, but she questions him about his car because she says, oh, well, do you remember that four Cortina you had? And he was like, oh, yeah, the Fury. The fury. Um, and she's a bit like, yeah, that, that's that's familiar with the car that I was locked in, isn't it? And mm. anyway, Stuart w- talks his way around it, he essentially. Does, but he lets us know that he's evil because he gives a little smile well, when yes. she turns away. When Tina so goes to the know bar. we he's not legit. Yeah, Tina goes to the bar and he scowls at Tina as she walks over to the bar as the doof doof kicks in. Mm. So we know that he's up to no good. So she carries on, gets more advice from Sonia again the next day. The new Doc Cotton she is and um, she's basically been told let Mick know he'll be able to sort it out <laughs> so, so, I wouldn't trust Mick at the moment <laughs> she's been sleeping on Sonia's bed and she's been uh, ben, <laughs> Dot's <sorry>. bed <laughs> no 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 she's been sleeping on Sonia's sofa or well, that could also be Dot's bed because she was sleeping downstairs wasn't yeah, she because of her back one point. I mean yeah you're quite right I mean and I think Tina was quite right as well to say that you know I don't think anything I say to him about Stuart is going to be convincing mm, that she was right bloody mick well she's, she's so annoying at the moment well she goes she goes back to the vic and this is when Stuart has already said to mm. linda and uh yeah, he's sort of told his own version of tina's of story isn't he and he says you know i'm you know we're gonna catch him don't you worry about it and tina's a bit shocked that he's done this with and he she says to him you know i, I didn't really want you to talk to them just yet mm. and she but he, and knew. he keeps dropping like little hints that it is him like in front of her as well yeah like, really horrible like slight thing well this is when he let the game out the bag wasn't it because Mm. he 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 whispered well he said um i'm not gonna let anyone call you a slag Mm. and um she looks up and says i never told you that last night and he's adamant that she did and then he whispers in her ear you slag like that and (laughs) and um, she runs away well she steps sits back doesn't she and knocks the table over (laughs) and mick and linda just look over like Oh, I'm sure everything's fine. Yeah, well, Mick's... Like, for God's sake. <laughs> Mick's busy it's with really his... It's really obvious something's wrong with yeah, Tina. Yeah, Mick's busy with his beer delivery and Linda... Linda knows something's wrong. Linda's mm. known something's wrong. I think she's wants... Again, she just wants an excuse for there's something to be something wrong with Stuart. Mm. She's realised that, that Stuart's had a few strikes now and he's pretty much uh, outstayed his welcome. Mm. I mean, when him and Mick were talking once Tina runs off, he drops another little hint for the storyline later that um, he said, I got us into that World Cup that that time to mick ah yes so little... he's dropping little hints he's not very good because that will go on to something yeah a bit later. it does yeah good point so um yeah tina's now being she... quite destructive and getting drunk in the club <laughs> she's on a bender she's had um a 35 centiliter bottle mm-hmm. of vodka um and these men didn't even do anything to her they just looked at her once that was it oh i mean in the club i yeah. thought you meant in the car oh, I was gonna no, say, that's no, quite no, a harsh no. thing to have no, in the 20 well, well, she's being very aggressive well, she was she? dancing she was dancing a bit spaced out wasn't she because mm. she got Billy to turn on the music and then she knocked into their table and then they made the mistake of also calling her uh, a slag <laughs> it's like well, I don't know if they did they did she just thought they did they, they, oh, they did. did they okay. whispered they said oh look at that slag and her um, new catchphrase is no slag. one can break me <laughs> yeah and uh, she's never seemed to bother her throws before. a glass or a bottle of something at was it Billy or the mm. lads at the bar? And then she kind of scurries off and like a, like a fox in headlights, she kind of scurries off into the night mm. and uh, we don't see for her again. This um, whole thing with Tina having sudden remembered all of this because she heard that song. Mm. I saw someone mention online that surely her abusive relationship with Tosh would have triggered something as well. <laughs> that is interesting, actually. It? Yeah. It's like it's just one of one of those things where they've written it in now mm. and trying to um, back pace. I did think that, actually. Mm. Um, I yeah it it when so, uh, i was doing um some work to uh, this week i did think the same thing that perhaps there should have been but it was the, it was the emotional memory of the song wasn't it that's what triggered her yeah it's lucky she hadn't heard it yeah. before at a birthday or something and i mean <laughs> it's true it's like throwing someone's cake on the floor i no. mean yeah, Stuart said like everyone was listening to that song in the day and it was like i don't remember everyone listening to that song in the day i wasn't around Wait, no, you weren't. Yes, you well, you I were, but you were too young remember. to understand. You were too young to be put I was into too a boot. Young to uh, yeah, <laughs> have memories. You were given a bottle. So um, Tina goes missing. She doesn't come home, and Billy, his mini storyline, comes in with her purse. 
Yeah, doesn't well, seem to be that bothered that she no. left her purse, does he? No, I mean, Mick has a go at Billy um, because he said, oh, why weren't you keeping your eye on Tina? But then I think Mick should remember that fateful night of Shaquille stabbing. You know, he told Shaquille to go on his way. <laughs> With blood we on don't his want, hands. Yeah, we don't want, <laughs> yeah, we don't want any drunks, <laughs> underage drunks around here. So really, I think Billy did his mm. responsible uh, duty by just handing in the purse and letting them know that Tina's gone a mm. bit AWOL. I mean, Mick and Stuart go off to do their little hunt. Not a paedophile hunt, but like a hunt for these men all they love looking for hunt. Tina or something, can't they? But they're looking for Tina yeah. now, but at the same time and looking then, for evidence yeah. about the lads. And Linda gets a phone call from the police saying Tina's yes. here. Yes. And she confides in um, Linda because Linda sort of notices that she's not quite quite right. Every time she mentions Stuart, she looks, looks like a deer in headlights. Yes. And um, this is when Mick's listening in. Well, p- again, before this, mm. um, Stuart, uh, when Tina's been picked up, by Linda, and they're in the uh, kitchen of the of the Vic. Mm-hmm. Um, Stuart walks over to Tina and uh, kind of just g- gestures, rubs her hand, <laughs> and says, "Um, if there is there anything you can give us, any information that will help, you know, any music." And so again, mm-hmm. he's, he's he's horrible, isn't knocking he? away, chipping away at Tina bit mm-hmm. by bit. I mean, as we've learnt, the game torturer is all about going on and on and on until you give in so again is tina was tina deliberately kind of pulling it back a little bit because she didn't want to be seen as weak mm. around stuart as well by it's admitting a long game of torture 24 years it of is making. it is but if stuart you know if stuart's kind of chipped away at her enough to make her admit mm. that it was stuart then stuart's technically won but then what does what has stuart won because he might have um, lost a friendship with mick but then as we learned on friday perhaps not <laughs> Well, exactly. I mean, Mick listens to this and hears Tina saying, I don't want to tell Mick because I don't think he'll believe me. Mm. Turns out she has a point. Yeah. So like the, the next day they go to the Stuart and Mick go to the cafe and have a bacon sandwich between them. <laughs> yeah, because Linda says to him, just talk to him. Look in his eyes. Yeah. He'll see. And yeah, again, he seems to be on Stuart's side. Well, Stuart, Stuart brings up that perhaps it might not be one of the team that they were playing for. Perhaps it was a team <laughs> that was within the cup because mm. it was apparently there was this tournament happening. Yes, on the it's a really elaborate story. This is now. Mm. It's just a bit too detailed. Well, it's it's like a bit yeah, too it's far. Like, yeah, Stuart's trying to be so. Um, I know everything, every detail. It's like making him look more and more guilty to me. Mm. But um, so yeah, there's this elaborate story where Mick gets her di- Tina's diary well, she back goes, from that day. Yeah, she goes to the attic and um, Tina's like teenage box of angst yeah. is, in the, is in the attic where she's got like more photos. She's kept them all these and, years. Yeah, and her diary. And, um, you know, Mix again trying to say, you know, some, something here might jog your memory. You know, <laughs> something here might help out to you know, give us a few more hints. Mm. And he sits um, Tina and Linda down and and Mick, as good as says, like, I don't want to admit that perhaps... Stuart may have done something I wrong. Know. I mean, like all the things he's done in the past two weeks. Yeah. What does it take for Mick to acknowledge that Stuart may be mm. not such a great guy? It's like last week, he threatened his wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's he got hilarious. him involved in this, you know, the, the paedophile yeah. ring. He and got him into him trouble. Over. He threatened. He um he blackmailed him um with the information saying I went to jail for you. You know, he's done mm. all these horrible things to Mick, and Mick's kind of rebounded back every time, kind of forgiven him because for one reason or another so surely with this past information he should take tina's side tina who I has know, done nothing done to me nothing at all to me and so has silly. no reason to lie um or make any of this stuff up i mean i was really upset also that shirley i know i was just about to say it's such lazy writing to say shirley's gone on holiday mm. like where where has she gone i know and the only reason they've done that is because they know that if shirley was there this would all <laughs> shirley would have cleaned it, it all just, up yeah <laughs> shirley so would a, take it's no a, it's a bit lazy no rubbish i mean his story was that there was another mick who yes was playing number nine Num- <laughs> yes he wore the number nine shirt and um he was really good at goal he always saved all the goals but wait he broke his ankle no he's he, i think he didn't he like score all the score goals, all the goals. i think, goals. I think he was a striker i mean don't ask me these questions for my limited knowledge of from football, this elaborate story <laughs> of mix for my limited knowledge of football i understand that the goal the, the goalie is normally number one. Oh, okay well, anyway, number nine, <laughs> he broke his ankle, so it couldn't have been him. Yeah, but who and was he, it? Yeah, and the one who um, fitted in was Stuart. Well, it fitted in because it was Stuart. Yeah. Stuart was the player so who was took number place, nine. Who, obviously, you said he dropped a little hint earlier in the week by saying, yes. you know, I, it was because of me, we won the cup. But, yeah, so now everyone hates Stuart officially, do they? That's well, we three, don't know that. Mick. Four. 
four out of five hating. I mean, Mick Mick looked quite devastated because it the episode, the week's episodes ended with him uh, doing that, and Mick looked pretty glassy eyed and devastated that his BFF <laughs> was now also a potential, you know, well, you could use the term murderer, I guess, um, or or attempted murderer, mm, or psychopath, psychopath. There we go. Yeah, it was a psychopath. Mm. Just another thing about Mick not believing anything anyone says unless it comes from Stuart's lips. <laughs> Um, obviously, Nick's wife uh, had a bit of an incident with Dino a few years ago, mm-hmm. um, and Linda was, you know, a bit guarded about sharing this information with Mick for one reason or another. Mm. Now, knowing what we know yeah, now, now about we know Mick, why. <laughs> yeah, perhaps there is a good reason for it. No, Linda, Dino yeah, wouldn't do that. Dino wouldn't do Shut that. Up. I've just got your diary out. Go the... change the barrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go change the barrel. I've got your diary out the attic, and it says nothing about Dino. Yeah, it's on the a kitchen bit... table. It's a bit silly how much faith he seems to put into it. It's um, a blind Stuart. faith, isn't it? I think, mm. uh, but it, to be fair to Stuart, his only friends on the... Uh, sorry, to be fair to Mick, his only friends on the square is or was Ian Bill, who got him done by pretending that he was um, sleeping with a prostitute. Mm. Um, and... Rainy. <laughs> Rainy, yeah. Um, because he's... Done, oh, and, and um, Vincent. Oh, yeah, he's good friends with Jack. Yeah. Remember that boys' night in they had when they played play- FIFA on the PlayStation and yeah. pizza? And they opened up to one another. Wonderful. (laughs) Wonderful. So So, um, over on Twitter, we just got a few comments. Twitter's not been too busy this week on EastEnders front. I think everyone's had a bit of a chill after the Mm. World Cup. So so Jen says, you know, Stuart obsessively tracking down people for Tina when it was him all along gives me a bad feeling about the paedophile hunting. Well, he was wrong on more than one instance. Mm. Well, I, again, I think that might... Or he's trying to cover his own tracks. I think this woman is... Oh, well, you think suggests... he might have been Well, that's what um, Jen is... Obvi- I think that's what she's suggesting because he's obviously covering his own tracks with Tina. Mm. Funnily enough, I was but... thinking when we were watching this uh, Friday episode when he was in the cafe, he was very quick to find ways of manipulating and showing that he, you know... Is innocent. Yeah, showing mm. he was innocent because Mick was c- constantly giving him hints to say like, um, yeah, let's just give up. And he'd be like, no, I don't want to give up. Yeah, mm. well, we might as well just give up. Let's have a pasty and give up, you know. So I think, yeah, Mick, Stuart's a very manipulative young man. And Paul says, it's about time they gave Louisa Bradshaw White, that's Tina, something meaty to do on EastEnders. This past trauma storyline and the older storylines regarding her mum and her death just show how great she really is. Tina is a great character. There's been a lot of love for Tina actually on um, Twitter, mm. the uh, actress. Yeah, really she is has. good. It's just mm. another one of those things where they don't seem to use them. Well, she's always been a bit of a B character, but, mm. but when she's up front and, you know, used and utilised, she's mm. clearly very, she can handle it. And then Laurie agrees with us. And Mick is an idiot for even doubting Tina right now. So, yeah, here, here. What is it going to take for Mick to just see Stuart the way he is? With these rose tinted glasses he has for Stuart are I know. just insane. <laughs> so silly. There must be more to it than just that. Is it that, is it that he's missing companionship other than, you know, his own family? Mm, I still think we need to know more about Half Wayne Stuart's parents or their upbringing or their childhood mm. to explain why both of them are a bit... Because halfway's the same. Halfway, whenever Stuart does something wrong, halfway's really quick to defend mm. Stuart. Yeah, halfway's like the opposite. He's like shy. He's like almost like a beaten mouse, isn't he? Mm. That sort of. So yeah, I think um, they need to look into their childhood. Well, and see what what happened what between was going them. on. Yeah. Do you reckon then that halfway was the favoured younger because he was the youngest child? He was favoured, and Stuart maybe. always had to. Uh, or maybe his prove dad himself. was abuse, abusive or something. I don't know. To both of them, maybe Stuart tried to protect halfway. Don't know. What's it, well, do you think Stuart then... Because the, the relationship between Stuart and Halfway is a, is a strange one it as well. It is odd, yeah. Like I say, Stuart always seems to give the impression that he's... Help, like, he always makes out that he doesn't like Halfway, but at the same time, him and Halfway seem to... I know they're family and they're brothers and you mm. have to look after one another, but there always seems to be this thing that Halfway wants to be part of Stuart's life more mm. than the other way around. Yeah. And almost like Halfway's like this thing that keeps pulling on his shirt t-shirt and mm. you know, saying oh can i come with you please can i come with you it's interesting but yeah it'd be interesting it'd be nice if they brought their mum and dad into the uh, story yeah if they we don't know if they're alive or not who knows who knows time will tell right so we're moving on to um new job careers now well you woke me up with a the start there did i you why did. are you asleep <laughs> um so we're going to be talking about Haley and the slaters that sounds like a it sounds like a girl band from the sixties, doesn't it? Haley and the Slaters. Haley and the Slaters. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so Haley is um, now driven career career wise this week. Well, she, she wants, wants to find a job, mm. doesn't she? She's been told enough times by the rest of the Slaters She's that she needs to find a job. Around. She, she again is awake in the night during the thunderstorm. Yes, eating sandwiches, eating Lily sandwiches. Um, Stacy said that all she seems to do is shop for food, which <laughs> seems quite an admirable thing to do, filling up everyone's stomachs mm. in the house. And um, so, yeah, she sort of asks, Lily tries to help her look for a job, says, apparently Haley can sing. I can sing a bit. What, mm, is this a future career outside of the soap for um, the actors? They should have a talent night, her, Bex. They've done this before. Yeah, they can do it again. Um, <laughs> Shaquille, Shaquille's not here anymore to do his songs though yeah That's but a shame shimpy wrote read a poem yeah he could do a poem again yeah but who to this is this is this is this well, story we'll nice find and... out then this... they'll do another hint at who he was reading his poem to oh not this... donna that's for sure <laughs> won't be any more anyway yes. so she sort of comes to the conclusion that this taxi is where it's at so she's got the this keys. taxi yeah she wants the keys back but jean <laughs> has got them tight <laughs> so um Haley goes to her little fancy boy Keanu. Yes, for some advice. To try He's to... in his little um what are they not joggers? Overalls. Overalls, yeah. And his tight t-shirt. And his tight t-shirt and she um comes over and startles him and he hits his head. I mean if it wasn't hot enough in the uh lounge while we were watching EastEnders that <laughs> evening, it really did sizzle. It was <laughs> like I could I could literally I thought bacon was cooking. It was so <laughs> coming from the screen. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, she sort of asked him to help break into the cab, basically. She did. She she had some mad skills already about breaking yeah. into cab. So she's she done was, it before. She, did, she could do about 80% of it, but it's just the alarm she wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. That's what she needed. Keanu, Keanu knew how to disable that. <laughs> and um, like, all the Slaters were just stood in line watching, like, <laughs> angrily. So I don't know how Keanu didn't see them come out, because they were all stood r- quite close to him. They sneak out, don't they? Yeah. They're like ghosts. They yeah, just they've got, come... like, little cat paws. They're yeah. They're very quiet, cat is. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, they sort of catch... Keanu and Haley in the act. But Big Cat Mo wants to put Keanu over her knee. She does. <laughs> Who doesn't? You know. Big Mo though steps in quite quickly because um she comes she, up with money money's in her eyes, isn't it? Well, she's come up with an, uh, a quick excuse for Haley and says she had she asked her to get stock for Fat Elvis, so she lied for Haley. And uh Haley asks her why she lied and Mo wants uh, basically has a plan. <laughs> yeah, 50-50. 50-50. Let's get Lots some fares profits. from the black cab. Mm. And that's basically all Mo did the rest of the week was just be like, um, shouldn't you be working now? Come on, go to work. Yeah, yeah, go to work. work. Come on, Haley. Come on. Well, that and uh, Kat, uh, Jean and Mo kept on about two, three occasions mentioning how fat she had become. I know. They were fat shaming her, which was disgraceful. It was. Not in this day and age. Come on. Absolutely. These standards writers. It's not on. At one point, Kat even says, it's like, I was only joking, Haley. If you were a fat cow. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> all right oh, it's all banter when it's family yeah. it's different isn't it if it's um family i think <laughs> so yeah they're family. saying her she's gaining weight not working out that she might be pregnant mm. yeah Haley also does the stump tummy rub a couple of times throughout she the episode she's thinking about her future mm. and um mo gets the keys from jean by for, um, sneaky yeah. tactics great acting i even i saw jean look and then look back <laughs> don't ever <laughs> criticize it jean i'm not a criticizing director <laughs> Oh, okay. No, it criticised the actress. <laughs> um, and yeah, they get the keys and she sort of, that drunk man from earlier who was in the Oh yes, scene, there was a scene with Stuart in the Vic. Yes. Um, she picks him up and takes him on a taxi ride. They yeah. have like a real long sort of heart to heart. They tell each other each yeah. other's Yeah, well lives. the, the uh, drunk guy basically has just had a divorce and he's not seen his son for a long time. Um, and Haley sympathises and uh, says, you know, she needs to mm. clean up her own act. She, she mentioned- tells him that she's pregnant by another man. Yes. Married man. A, a married man's baby. She's terrified, but she's excited with the responsibility, although it does scare her. Mm. So she's a bit of it a r- roller coaster. She's hot and then she's cold. But while she's t- she's talking to the guy, the guy falls asleep. And so she's kind of let off a bit of, you know, information yeah. from her chest. But at the same time, to, it, but... she felt it was safe that she told someone yeah. that would never come back to. And she was really nice. She said, oh, there's a traffic jam. Just get out here. Yeah. It'll be quick on the tube. I won't charge you. Yeah. What does he do? Takes a photograph of her license number. What a git. I know. Horrible. I mean, we later... Especially dis- when you find out he's a policeman. Well, I was going to say, we later discover he's a man. police officer. So he's drunk and disorderly because yeah. he got chucked out of the... Vi- well, mm. screamed out of the Vic by Stuart. <laughs> and um, then he's always, always, always on the job, you see, police officers. They're always scoping for something. Yeah, he needs to spend the night in the cell, I think. <laughs> With um Tina. 
So the next day he's looking quite bright and breezy. He's in his uniform. Probably hungover or still drunk, but he's in his uniform. No, well, you know, you have to get up for work in the morning. And that's what they said to him. Well, I suppose well. in EastEnders world, there were two days. We missed a Wednesday, so maybe he had a Wednesday off. I mean, in EastEnders world, no one really has hangovers. <laughs> it's like, it's no. like from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep, there's <laughs> always a drink in their hand. Um, and yeah, obviously all the Slaters are very worried that this policeman's round, especially Mo. <laughs> Yes, to be coming out in red blotches. Yes, well, Mo starts hiding away all of her um, <laughs> dirty, dodgy deals. So she has like mobile phones and mm. all kinds of stuff, doesn't she? And, and she, yeah, she puts them underneath the stairs. Her, that's yeah. her favorite hiding place. Because remember the time when she uh, had something? She handed it was when Ian Bill visited. Pack of biscuits, wasn't it? Yeah, she handed yeah. <laughs> Stacey a pack of biscuits yeah, when she was dead for that short time. Well, yes. no, Cat was dead. It was Cat behind there. Oh, was it Cat? Yeah, okay. That was when she was dead. That was one of my... That, that scene of the year so far. That was me. funny, yeah. yeah. It's, it's up there. Mm. Top three. Different. Um, so, yeah, the policeman's not there to nick her, but he's just there to give her some friendly advice about this taxi business. Well, he said they're clamping down on black cab fraud mm. at the moment. I don't well, know if this all is... There's these Uber laws, isn't there? So. Ah, I was going to ask you about that. Do you think it's life imitating art? Or art imitating life, I should That's say. That's what EastEnders is. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he, they're all listening behind another door. There's a lot of that on that episode, listening behind doors. Um, and they hear him say that Haley has someone else to think about now. Yes, it's not just you to think about. No, I thought that was really... If I heard that, that's really obvious that someone's pregnant or expecting a child. But none of them seem to twiggle. I think Kat twiggled. Well, yeah, slightly. And I think that's something that Kat's keeping in her arsenal for a bit later <laughs> For on. an argument later Yeah, yeah exactly. Because obviously that's going to be something that's going to be erupt between both Kat and Haley. Are they, the when the, all this comes out, are they going to somehow try and... Like put a nod towards the "you ain't my mother" bit outside, you think, and they're gonna do like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know how <laughs> they could do it, like an Alfie. You never slept with my husband. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> or like the baby's not Alfie's. Yes, he is. Like, do you know? Oh maybe, yeah, that's maybe do a nod or something like a Zoe and Cat, Haley and Cat. I don't know what anniversary is that. When was that know, scene happened? It happened like two thousand two. Mm. I'm guessing two thousand three. They like to do little nods here and there. Maybe they might like film it similar or something. I was thinking like the reveal because she's got long black hair like Zoe had and mm. Cat's cat. <laughs> it'll be cat likes to repeat the, hit yeah. the past i just she? thought it was, I, it, that's one of those things where they could do a little nod a part of me would love that because it, 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 if i saw it i'd go Ooh, like yeah. that but there's another part of me that thinks no don't no. do that but yeah but Haley would be good at that because she's good at doing a shouty bit oh she's great she just shouts so she, so so she'd be good at <laughs> shouting back <laughs> So I am looking forward to this um, reveal. Whenever Haley's confronted to anything, it's like instant her reaction is. <laughs> no, I didn't want it. <laughs> she's like when Mo said, um, "There's a there's a name for people like you." She's like, "What is that?" Name? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> amazing. I love it when so um, early in the week when Haley called Mo a gra- or she called someone a grass, and it's just the way she said under breath, "You grass." <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely loved it when she said that. Mm. I mean, she's been really mean to Keanu as well. Yeah, well, Keanu... She's cleaning the taxi. Well, there's bird poo on the window. Yeah. Asks Keanu where he got his baseball cap. <laughs> yes, the baseball cap was a bit chavvy. And he just bought it. <laughs> yeah, just bought it. Probably from uh, Shrimp. Shrimpy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's high quality. Yeah, absolutely. Shrimpy wouldn't sell anything <laughs> less. And um, yeah, and uh, uh, Hayley takes it off his head and then starts cleaning the poo. Uses like, it like a really cloth. horrible. <laughs> it, He's like w- done all these nice things for her. I mean, treat them mean. Keep well, them I did say this last week, didn't I? So mm. obviously that is what she's doing. But after she decided to ruin <laughs> Keanu's hat, <laughs> she goes off to the Minute Mart. And as we've discussed before, the Minute Mart sells everything. Do you know what else they sell? <laughs> <laughs> maps. Uh, maps. The London maps A to Z. London makes sense. Mm. She should have bought it from the store that sells all the London memorabilia. But do you think they'd sell a, a map of London? Well, if they sell London hats and T-shirts, I'm sure they'll sell a map. I don't know why she doesn't just go online and look at maps. She ain't got a computer. No, she, could she ain't b- got a house. She could have borrowed tips. She only got one pair of bloody jeggings. <laughs> well, no, that's true. She's like... Although her wardrobe has expanded very quickly. Well, considering she came, exactly like you say, to the square with mm. just one top. I think she's wearing Slater, of... um, Stacey's stuff, isn't she? Yeah, they always mention that, don't they? They always say, oh, to put something of Stacey's Stacey on. Stacey won't mind. Yeah, she won't mind. <laughs> Poor Stacey. I mean, Martin's been um, absent quite a lot this week as well. And Stacey. They've yeah. both been upstairs in the bedroom. Oh, catching trying, up trying with that pay... door lock. What, in the bathroom? Done, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's cleaning himself. Um, so Haley's still sort of wanting to do this new job of being a taxi person. She wants to learn the knowledge. And um, Keanu says, my mate did that. Mm. And it took him a few years. She said, what, is he stupid like you then? <laughs> Again, charming. 
Um, but yeah, so it takes a few years. So this basically Haley's like, I can't bother with them. Haley does have the attention span of a blueberry. Yeah. So, you know, it's gonna it's something that she doesn't really want to do. And also she did say quite openly that she's thinking about her now. She's thinking of the media, mm. not the future. She's got a baby. She's got a baby. She's got no time to learn. So, um, but Kat apparently is quite up for this well, career. Well, Kat straight away said, hey, if, if we were drawing from Aunt, forget the aunt's name <laughs> Aunt now. Shirley. Aunt Shirley, yeah. <laughs> to um, our house, what route would you take? And Mo was like, oh, you go up that road. And she went, no, you wouldn't, because there's traffic lights. <laughs> you go here, here, here. Like, yeah. off, so it was obvious what was going to happen. She's in her jeans from her dad, and not it? Yeah, she said with a little tear in her eye, yeah, it's when me and dad used to go out together. I bet the actor who played Charlie's kicking himself now that all the slaters are back, he came back one episode to, to die. die and now he's like oh. <laughs> i mean i was never a fan of um i know but i bet he's really annoyed mm. mo's back gene's back he could be back yeah but i, I like the, the vigor that those four have brought back mm. like he wouldn't bring much vigor <laughs> no i really don't think he would he Love was a bit of a Charlie. one-tone actor yeah. he's lovely he was friends but... with patrick another friend for patrick and ted patrick and ted are fine they're they busy three-way chess they could have done loads of storylines for charlie's later <laughs> i wonder if ted's getting through those vegetables that he decided <laughs> to pour his wife onto mm. less said about ted the better delicious so we're sort of left with this that cat kind of maybe knows that Haley's pregnant yeah jean's still supporting Haley. jean's mm. got yeah, she wants to give her boundaries and rules and regulations which she's never had in her life which Haley seemed really happy that someone was actually on mm. her side and yeah so that was nice to see it was sweet um and cat yeah and cat's gonna take the knowledge she reckons she can do it in two years because that's what EastEnders does take <laughs> something yeah. lot slow burner storyline like, i do believe that cat's gonna do it in like six months or something and she'll be like i'm the only one in old london who's never done it in six yeah. months because they have to hurry things along real quick they can open a taxi rink up again in the calf couldn't they oh yes they could look at you. Kathy would love it. A bit of commission. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> something to do, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> over on Twitter, Paul says, I've enjoyed the Slaters being back, but Jean and Haley are the stars of the family. Do you mm. agree? Yes. I do. I just adore them so much. Steven says, Seriously, Stenders, keep Haley away from Keanu. That sexy beast can do so much better than that skank. <gasps> which one's the skank? Which one's the sexy beast? It's objective. Haley away from Keanu. So oh, okay. Objective. Sorry. I just. When, yeah, but some people might think that that Keanu's was from a bit of a EastEnders Weekly. No, I'm joking. <laughs> that was from Stephen. And then Laurie says, "I can't wait to see Kat's reaction when she finds out Haley's pregnant and Alfie is the father." Yes, well, that's going to obviously mm. be the first big story, I believe, after the summer silly summer season ends. It will, because you were just saying actually that um, last week that they've pretty much shown every single scene in the summer trailer I know, that's and it. then they showed the remaining two this week we've still got six weeks left mm. summer holidays it's a silly summer season though isn't it now phil's gonna be missing sharon's gonna be missing and dot's gonna be missing so <laughs> well dot's missing anyway more um, on that maybe a bit later mm. so um we're just gonna have a little break now oh yes because normally at this time of the show we would do i'm doing this now <gasps> yes however and it's not due to me not doing it because I have done it. <laughs> but uh, a little bit of a development happened this week. And we're hoping if we can check the right boxes and get the talk to the right people, something quite exciting yes. might be happening. We hope. Not necessarily next week, but in the future. Mm. So we'll because, sit and wait. Sit and wait. Get, be on tender hooks on our behalf. Um, it's like his own little diff diff. Yeah, exactly. So this week, because of that, we've decided we're going to do two games. And I'm starting the proceedings with Martin Fowler's Five a Day. Excellent. Right. So do you remember the rules of the game? Yes. But in case. But I was going to say, in case anyone else, it might be a new listener. Then I'm just going to. We've got new listeners in Ireland this week yes big up and to canada. ireland and can yes. canada and ireland are here <laughs> big up They're canada joining and ireland. our worldwide party so absolutely. yeah absolutely yeah we, we've um we appreciate any new listeners we love new listeners but of course we love our existing listeners too of course big up love to everyone so uh here are the rules to my devourers five a day i will ask ben a question and he must list five answers that relate to that question he must wait after every answer to discover the question, if the answer he's given is right or wrong. And he only has 30 seconds to give five answers. OK, clear? Yeah, all good. Super. So this week we are going to be talking about the Bridge Street Cafe, which has been the focal point for a many an important storyline in the history of the soap. The ship of the cafe has been navigated and sailed by many residents of the square too. Has it? Are you talking about cafes? Yeah. OK. <laughs> it's been owned by... 
more than one piece. Oh, God. Person. Yes. Has it? Yes. This isn't going to go well. I, well, I'll, well, I'll give you a clue in a second. So basically, I'm going to ask you in 30 seconds. Right. Do you think you can name five current or previous owners <laughs> of the cafe? No. From, yeah, I reckon you can. Okay. From 1985 right. to the time of today's recording. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I would say is it's worth just throwing out names of, <laughs> of, of current um, cast and think about the bills. That's okay, all, all the bills. Think about the bills. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So you have 30 seconds, as I say, to name five current or previous owners of the cafe starting from now. Go. Cafe. <laughs> Kathy Bill, yes, she owned it from 1986 and 1989 to 1995. Yeah, yeah. Ian. Ian, yes, he owns it now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Lou Bill? No. Peter Bill? No. Uh, Lucy Bill? Yes, Lucy Ooh. Bill named it Cindy's in 2012 to 2013. Cindy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I've done it. Oh, no, 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 Cindy's, that's what she named it. Oh, I forgot to say. And you've only got Cindy three. owned it. No, you've only oh, got three. Pat? No. Roy? Patrick. Uh, time's up. Yolandi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Time. Who else could own it? Are there any other bills left? Or should I go through the Mark with you? Fowler. There's loads of bills. Mark, Mark, Fowler. Mark Fowler's not a bill. He's a Fowler. He never yeah, was so a bill. Pauline. Yeah, but Pauline. <laughs> no, it's the same. The Fowler's Well, I bills suppose, yes, like they, the family in. tree. They okay, all who else was there? All right, then? so if we're starting from the beginning, it, um, Ali Osman and Sue Osman no. owned it from 1985. You've just mentioned it now about their taxi rank. Well, they used it they as a taxi it. rank. That's what Roy did. <laughs> no, Roy used the um, garage, oh, yeah. the, the car yeah, lot. Car lot. Yeah. <sighs> then it was owned by Kathy, as I said, 1986 to 1989. Yeah. And da, da, da. Phil Mitchell owned it. Did he? Yep, yeah, he owned it from 2000 to 2003. Well, who worked there when he owned it? Marie. <laughs> Sharon wouldn't be in there. Peggy. <laughs> Peggy was chopping up the bacon. Uh, yeah, 2000, 2003, 2011, 2012. I think he bought it. When Ian, remember the bankrupt storyline when Ian yeah. was going from his, his shop to shop? And stuff. No, yeah, and then he got depressed and homeless and so oh, on. Okay. Laura Bill owned it. She named it Laura's. 2003 to 2004. <laughs> Jane Bill owned it. Really? I think I think he transferred it to Jane for tax purposes. Oh, God. Uh, 2009 to 2011. And this one, I'm surprised you didn't remember. Oh, so I do. Shirley Carter owned it. And she renamed it Shirley's. No way. Yep. What, well, recently? 2011 to 2012. I remember that. I can't. Yeah. I remember she was really smug about it. <laughs> it, was before, I, it must have been just before the Carters. Yeah. All the Carters like moved 14, in. they came mm. in. Mm. Well, I... Never. And then you've already got correct Lucy Bill and <laughs> Ian Bill was the most obvious one. I mean, if you, that's why I say if you stuck with the Bills, you would have been there. Mm. So there you go. So that was... Uh, how did you guys get on home? <laughs> that was another edition of Martin Fowler's Five a Day. <laughs> right so we're moving on now to say another farewell to a character yes a bit sooner than i was expecting i must say yeah it just kind of came <laughs> on didn't appeared. it yeah just appeared and disappeared like they do recently mm. so um this was apparently donna's last episode on friday well, it's donna's last week on yeah. the square which is her biggest week yet <laughs> Well, I mean, this is the most Donna's probably ever done mm. since she's been Apart on the from square. Her own pregnancy, um, story. Oh yeah, and also when she was first introduced, when she was like the other market, <laughs> and they they were fighting to stop the com- combining of the two. Yeah, markets. it made me laugh. I'm um, halfway through this week when Robbie suggested maybe she was pregnant, or Sonia suggested was she pregnant, and Robbie was like, "It wouldn't be such a bad idea, would it?" And she was like, uh. "Yeah, I know." And I was thinking, last year you were willing to have your brother's baby <laughs> not but let's make it clear not by yeah but i know but brother. vincent <laughs> but like that's really creepy mm. so what's wrong with and Robbie? kush she slept with kush as well didn't she did she yeah she slept with kush to get his seed <laughs> so she went for no the... yeah, she did no, I she swear. tried to but he no. wouldn't have slept with her <laughs> i'm sure it happened no. i'm sure it happened on a drunk night is this gonna be another <laughs> apology <laughs> next week <laughs> i can't believe that he tried she tried to but he wouldn't i remember because mm. she was that's when she went to last resorts of using asking her brother yeah because then that's when kim went a bit nuts because oh, she was like it's a bit weird well, it's her husband's <laughs> sperm but yeah like she'd rather that but robbie her actual boyfriend no i mean i think she was uh, divided of opinion f- <laughs> from her reaction of the uh well, pro- a lot suggestion. of her decisions this week don't make a lot of sense so a should lot... we go to the beginning of the week yes getting ahead of ourselves yes we're jumping so through. um i this i mean there's a few things one of the first scenes this week was max being really horrible to Donna in the street for no reason. Yes. 
said that, that really annoyed said me. that she's got her own problems she's yeah. not I she love the one where she's in like living in a dump and stuff and also he said that one of her problems was that she wasn't married it's like hello victorian <laughs> oh, no. max you're not married off to a man well, yet he's not even really married he's a fake marriage yes but in the eyes of everyone else oh, he's i just married. thought that rant by max was just horrible it was unnecessary wasn't it so i'm on donna's side team donna team d yeah so donna and robbie are having lunch and she's um, put a key in his soup. <laughs> a bit of a choke hazard, <laughs> some might say. <laughs> Lucky he saw it. I'm surprised um, they didn't do that. Actually, I, I afterwards I thought I'm really surprised they mm, didn't think of doing comical that. and yeah. choking and have and Jay, Jay would have given them Heimlich yeah, or something. Yeah, or mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> <laughs> what would Donna have thought then? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he's moving in. So Jay's rent problems are lifted Finally, for a bit fluttering There's away three of them now in the yeah. house i mean no one's been in um abby's room since she died <laughs> so there must have been cobwebs still and that spiders. cut out of um oh it's a who sh- was it <laughs> i can't remember she was dancing with it in her wedding dress. Yeah. yeah oh i don't remember yeah, oh it was, someone it was just it wasn't a like a person it was just like a fireman wasn't it, it was or a doctor oh, was or something it? yeah oh. i think it was just a cardboard cat with like steven a doc- <laughs> no not a steven that was <laughs> that would be in very poor taste r.i.p abby <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, Jay's rentals is looking a bit better for a few days because yes. he's got three people in there now. So Robbie's moved in. Although Jay hasn't actively tried to find someone to move in there. He did try once, but Phil just barged in and told the girl to leave. Oh, yeah, that's true. And also we were saying that Keanu almost moved in. Yeah, and then Karen... Ingrid wanted some alone time. Yes, and Karen... And um, that all went to pot. Well, he cooked, she cooked him some fish fingers and that basically is <laughs> how to get to Keanu's heart. Fishy fingers. <laughs> so, um, everything's looking up and happy with Donna at the moment. Yes, yes, yes. She's like the happiest she's ever been. Everything's going really well. I turned to you when this was happening and said, are they going to kill Donna? Because everything's happy. Well, it's what they like doing, isn't mm. it? All behind the scenes. Rainy sees her drug dealer again behind the vehicle and she tells him to leave. And Donna's looking in and noticing this. I mean, they're not hiding the fact that he's d- dealing drugs very well. Again, <laughs> no. they're doing it down the alleyway, which, um, again, I'm surprised the police aren't keeping a closer eye on mm. since two people... Well, there was a murder and an attempted murder <laughs> down there. Yeah. Um, and um, Donna decides to buy some drugs from the drug dealer. She does. She buys she's a not the police. <laughs> no, she's not. Well, <laughs> she's, she's, she's a social worker in her head, isn't she? Because she mm. thinks she's doing the best for baby Abby. Mm. I mean, it's a bit silly that she posted this through the door... With Roxy's kids live there. It, that was mentioned by Max later in the week as well. Yeah, but also, do you remember that happened before? And um, when Jay was dealing drugs at Roxy's flat and the kids picked it up, remember? And they nearly had it all. I do remember, yeah. So, come on. I bet it, it, it we was all a... know how silly... Um, what's her? I can't remember the blonde girl's name is. Amy. We know how silly Amy is. Amy. I, tell, I, I must say, um, Amy has become, obviously, the main child of Jack recently. Mm. because um, Ricky's not there. Well, Ricky can't be trusted anymore to do any storylines. <laughs> and um, she is so sickly sweet. It makes me... Like, Ingrid's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> like, Ingrid should have given her a little bit of, like... Bit of sass. Yeah. A bit of Roxy. More like, yeah, more like her mum, exactly. Less like her dad. <laughs> God, anything less than them. So, yes. So, Rainey's... So, Robbie invent- invites Max and Rainey over. Yes, they're coming for dinner. Yes. This will go down well. Well, they they decide they don't really like the idea of doing that. Mm. And um, they're in the cafe, and obviously Rainey doesn't see Donna because she's in a wheelchair. Yes, and she says things like, oh, why would we go... A, a trog... With that troglodyte. troglodyte. Yes. I mean... I had to Google troglodyte. Tro- you have to... Tro- tro- <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. I had to Google that to know what it was. Oh, yeah, go on. Do tell. It's a name for a cave, a short caveman. Ooh. Like Neanderthal, silly idiot sort of thing. I mean, I didn't know it was that insulting. Mm. I mean, that is quite insulting no to Donna. No wonder Robbie was upset. Yeah. Mm. But she heard and she s- said, come on then, what do you yeah. want to say? Just say to my face. And Rainy, <laughs> not like Rainy, because no, Rainy seemed to be up for confrontation, kind of quickly back, back, mm. uh, back, back stepped from She's what she said. horrible, Rainy. But um, so that obviously pushes Donna to think, no, I am going to put drugs in yeah. your door, actually. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> Sod the kids. I'm doing it. So, yeah, she does. She posts them through. Um, and then obviously there's a few scenes with Max and Robbie apologising to each other and Robbie mm. upset with Rainy because of she called her a troglodyte. <laughs> troglodyte. Yeah, I can't <laughs> say it. Troglodyte. Troglodyte. And yeah, but they have like a heart to heart. Well, Rainy comes over to, because uh, I think Rainy, Donna. yeah, Rainy sees that, you know, ultimately. She's human after all. And sometimes you need to kill people with kind. Sometimes it's not about one upmanship and who can get, you know, better than the other. Sometimes mm. if you can build, keep your enemies close, 
We'll keep your friends close. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was about to finish that for you, but I was like, no. Can you imagine that's just the end of the sentence? That's not right. Keep your enemies close. Yeah, keep your friends close, keep your enemies close. And I yes. think Rainey saw that. So mm. she goes over to, and actually, I think they had a true moment together. They mm. Donna so felt she... really guilty the second she heard all that about her. She and did. She was quite nice to her throughout the week. Yes. But um, Max obviously finds drugs in her coat. Because he's looking for the keys for something, isn't he? Well, Rainy had already... Donna tries to go and get the <laughs> envelope. Oh, yeah. And this is where we see number one of two <laughs> of Jack's personality just shining through when he shouts at Donna, what did your last slave die of? Because she asked him if he could maybe hang up a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good no, old Jack. I blocked that scene out of my head because Jack's just annoying. He's, he's so just... rude and like we just aggressive. Snaps so unnecessarily. Yeah. If he's not snapping at someone, then he's kind of kind of grunting around the mm. square was like he's, yeah. looking for women to he's like so kind of... like you think he'd be a bit happier now he's with mel after he's all these lost, months he's lost his nanny though hasn't he <laughs> do you reckon he's seeing mel is like his, the new mother like when if they marry he's gonna be like right woman get in the kitchen make me <laughs> dinner i'm going out to work you. mel wouldn't have that she'll she him would out. not you know sort him out so um but yeah no donna s- tries to get the drugs back but obviously it's too late yes and then that's when max Go through her coat. <laughs> well, because Rainy keeps the, keeps the drugs, doesn't she? And she's in the mm. uh, Carla office and she's shaking. And at that point, you're thinking, is she contemplating it? Will she take them? Mm. But she doesn't. No. She just keeps them there just so she knows she doesn't need them. Mm. So a lot of people do that. Like when they're giving up um, smoking, they yeah. keep like one pack in the house. It's a comfort. To sort of prove to themselves it's in the house, but I don't need to have it. Yeah. Is that absolutely right? So absolutely. That, that kind of makes sense. Obviously, Max goes off. <laughs> The deep end chucks her out yeah. in front of Donna during her happy moment. Of course. Of course. Well, this is just the yin and yang Donna, of the square. Yeah. Donna sees this when she's invited Sonia, Robbie and Muggles the monkey yes. to dinner. He's new. Muggles, he's a new character, isn't he? <laughs> Should have done a character profile it's on the him. new Wellard. <laughs> <laughs> I saw they had a dog. An extra was walking a dog through the park earlier. You got really Robbie excited when him. you saw that. There's a little hint to Robbie. Donna's gone now, so... There's Maybe always you need to get a dog. I mean, it's always Bronson. Yeah, that's not his. And the cat, Dot's cat. That's not his. Oh yeah, he's scared of Dave, Dave the cat. Robbie is. Is he? Yeah. What's Dave done? It. We have only when Mo told him that his no, he doesn't immortality. Like Dave the cat. He's scared of him still. <laughs> he did re- mention that a few weeks ago. We're still waiting. By the way, um, if anyone's listening from the BBC, we're still waiting for that signed photograph from Dave the cat. We are. Poor Dave. <laughs> I need to write an official letter. I think complaint. <laughs> Um, so Donna um, sees that Rainey's been chucked out and goes to the cafe and sort of offers her, if you need a place to stay, yeah. you can stay with us because we need the rent. <laughs> and there's like five bedrooms going free. So she's reaching out. She's being, I think she's being genuine as well. Now, yeah, she genuinely. She can't. Um, <laughs> she knows it's her fault that all this has happened. I think really. she sees a bit. I think she sees Rainey's um, sensitive and softer side after mm. that conversation. So she's kind of yeah. given in to her. And obviously Rainey tries to explain to Max that what we just said, she has it, so she knows that she doesn't need mm. it, blah, blah, blah. And she sort of, he says, could Donna have done it? She says, no, she's not that bad, actually. Yeah. Little but, um, did she know. Yeah, she goes to see her drug dealer. What He's got a name. He's oh, not just called drug dealer. I do. <laughs> drug On the dealer. credits, he's actually got a name. Jez. Jez. His name is Jez. So Rainy goes to see Jez and what, wants to know who bought those drugs. And it was the dark-haired girl in the wheelchair. The, her, your little wheelchair, mate. Yeah, so that narrows it down. Yeah. Donna can't rat. talk away out of this. There's only well, one person in a wheelchair in Woolwood. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Especially a mouthy one. So, yeah, that was quite the... <gasps> what's Rainy going to do? There's going to be weeks of build-up. She's mm. going to, like, torture her or... Move in, take her offer to move in with her and mess up her relationship with Robbie or... Well, yeah, but quite... Loads of stuff. Well, anything <laughs> could have happened, really. They could have really stretched this yeah, out. Nice Again, over, over summer. summer. Yeah, it would have been nice. She, she could have tortured her. Could have played mind games with her. Yeah, she could have got flat. together with Stuart. Got together with Stuart and played mind games with <laughs> Tina and... Uh... But no. Friday was apparently Donna's last ever episode. They literally just ended the storyline with one fell swoop. So Max talks to Donna and Donna... At first, says she, well, I wouldn't do something like that. I'm not stupid. And then she admits to it. Yeah. So then she she shows some remorse. Mm. And then Robbie goes up to Rainy in the cafe and says, Thank you so much for building bridges. And Rainy's like that. Hmm. Mm. I promised yeah. Max that I wouldn't say anything yeah, to Max Donna. Like, I'll sort it. Yeah. I, but I, if you didn't say I couldn't say anything to <laughs> Robbie. You have to be very specific with Rainy. Yes. What you want her to do and don't the do. The rules need to be set in mm. stone. So this upsets Robbie, causes a bit of an argument with Robbie and Donna. Yeah, I she mean... She says, 
I, everyone else has made mistakes. I'm allowed to make mistakes. Mm. Um, she also says that, like, you know, if it, if this is our first problem, our first big problem between us, um, what, you know, you can't just run off and run like mm. um, Claudette, my mum did, or like what Vincent did. And what does she do? I know, it's really like... Uh, she <laughs> runs <phones> off. <laughs> yeah, she phones a taxi and yeah. decides to go. So, um, yeah, she phones a taxi. Rainy happens to walk past the taxi when it stopped at a red light. Yeah. Um, it's the says, same spot. make it a long holiday. Yeah. Because that's what Rainy said. When Rainy was chucked out of Max's house, that's what she said to Donna. She said, she to said Donna. I'm on a break. Um, so make it a long break. And then that was it. She yeah, drives off. Goodbye. She didn't even seem... Like, the character didn't even seem particularly sad no, or upset. It was really like... Uh, I mean, when if 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 this was old Donna or Donna that we've known two weeks ago, Donna. Well, any time <laughs> between her start of the being on the soap to now, mm. then Donna would have been like, "Hey, mate, turn the taxi around. I'm gonna get her." Yeah. And so she would have done something about Giving it. Her some vigor that comment would. Also yeah, exactly. It would have kicked like... her, up, her boot up her bum. Oh well, she's off to live with um Claudette. I'm assuming. Well, I'm guessing she's off to see Claudette. But you said... Um, you she should have said, Mum, can you come back for a few weeks and sort this woman out? Her, what? Cora and Claudette. Well, that's the other thing. What's Cora going to do I now? Know. She's meant to be well, starting... she's just gone. Yeah, I know. She just lit, she, she lit a firework that was um, Donna. Yeah, to Donna. We'll, we'll get them yeah. together. Yeah. With this bottle of wine. <laughs> Next day, she's disappeared. Yeah, by then, I'm taking now baby Abby. So, um, yeah, Rainey's going through them. You know, you were saying that... Um, Donna's got quite a bit of information that she's taking away with her as well because she was the only one who knows the secret about Fat Boy. Mm, yeah, she knows that because obviously Vincent told her that mm. Ray, um, Rainy, <laughs> Ronnie Mitchell had gotten rid of um, Fat Boy. Mm. She's kept that secret this whole time. She's kept it the whole time. That was her best friend before Abby turned up. Yeah, and then Abby became her best friend. So, um, yeah, that's all R- Ronnie's gotten away with it in her grave. She's right. she will never be punished for that now. Well, she paid the ultimate punishment, which was drowning with her sister. With in a really bad pool. ending, <laughs> yeah, on having, screen yeah. ending, which is not good. She can never come back from. Kathy survived with her off screen ending. So did obviously Dirty and Den. Dirty Den yeah. So, but um, yeah. So mm. she's taken that with really her. Shame. That's secret. I feel like you say there's not much you can do with it. But um, d- we was we were also talking, and we said like it would be interesting if she should return. You suggested perhaps she would re- return for D and Chris's wedding. And she yeah, returns Mark with is still wedding. <laughs> yeah, she returns with some information about Vincent, mm, like, where he's been, where, or where or, he's not been, or where she's not. Oh yeah, or maybe if maybe Vincent has sent Claudette some information. Vincent's that, dead. I don't. Off screen, we were just talking oh, yeah, about this two seconds well, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. Vincent's not dead. No, Vincent's in limbo. He's, he's Kathy like, fight. No, he's Shrouder's Kathy sh- syndrome. <laughs> Shrouder's cat or whatever. It's like if he's a cat in a box, he's neither alive or dead. So Vincent is in a box. That's horrible. Well, that's what. That's the theory. You leave cats alone. I will, but Vincent <laughs> is in a box. He's in a big cardboard box somewhere, mm. and he's in limbo. So yeah. So, but there's so much with Donna as well. Like, also, if you're going to leave, she just left her pitch. Down. <laughs> I know it doesn't make any sense. So all her stock. She fought tooth and nail to keep that pitch. Yeah. All these years. So yeah, all her stock. What market still is going to take her place? Yeah, who's that man with the long hair going to come back? Yeah, well, he's another one. Whatever his name was. He had the vintage shop, didn't he? Yeah, he had. BBC paid a lot of money for him. He was a Broadway actor, and then he's disappeared. Just disappeared. But Sean O'Connor. Yes, no, Sean. (laughs) But it just goes to show that really there was. I don't know who's. I think the actresses said she wanted to leave. Yeah, but they always say that. Mm. But um, to me, I just think that this was really rushed mm. and it goes to show because all the loose ends haven't been tied up at mm. all i know there's so much more and what are they going to do with robbie now like I it's know. completely left him in limbo is he's going to live with jay now is jay ever going to get more flatmates <laughs> is jay ever going to get more flatmates i mean obviously donna leaving it leads to someone else arriving obviously we know that a cast member's been announced so maybe she'll move in with mm. jay well, we'll be talking about that maybe at the end of the mm. show about the new cast member. Anyway, yeah. what's what's the word on Twitter? Dino says, Donna deserved a much, much better exit than a generic leaving in the cab. I hope Lisa Hammond is moving on to bigger and better things. Which I must say we agree. It was a bit meh. It was an awful ending. Black her. cab ending seems to be the thing to do at the moment. Well, we Being was, Michelle. Everyone seems to... There's only two ways out of the square and that's either through the tube... Why don't they ever show someone at an airport leaving? (laughs) 
I, think, I don't know. It's, it's outside recording, different. isn't it? It costs too much. They yeah, need yeah. to keep it internal. But um, it's like the the traffic jam scene. I was, gonna, I was saying about they, they used that twice, didn't they? And that's only that set is only the street that's just mm. slightly further up from where the second cafe is, the Victoria mm. Street Cafe. Deborah says Donna is going to be missed, but at least they didn't kill her off. So maybe they can just rest her character and bring Lisa Hammond back in the future. I think she may come back for bits and pieces yeah like yeah like she's... funerals and weddings <laughs> yeah like I... that sort of thing <laughs> she seems to be the same like... as carmel i imagine she'll come back for things like that maybe no oh, no i think when carmel comes back it'll be again as a permanent character but with with donna she's one of those characters where you can just drop her in for a week mix things up a little bit and then pull her back mm. out again carrie says love donna she's a bitch on wheels in the best sense of the term <laughs> there you go <laughs> carrie's hit the nail on the head there yeah. it's fantastic Daniel thought it was quite funny. Rainy just casually getting out a wrap of crack in the cafe. Laughing face. Wasn't that last week when she had the... Well, she must have done it again. It must be that thing she was holding. Maybe she's still dealing it with... Um, <laughs> is it... Who's the uh, one who works at the cafe? Marie. Maybe she's still dealing it yeah. with Marie. And Lisa Hammond, who plays um, Donna said, I had a tear in my eye watching my last scenes on BBC EastEnders just now, working alongside my colleagues in all departments for four years, who I now call friends, is a rare privilege. A truly amazing and life-changing experience that I'll never forget. So I love that she go. said all departments. Yeah, hair, makeup. <laughs> Anything else? Um, sound. Directing, sound. Foley. Fe- fellow actors. Fel- extras. An- extras. Continuity directors. I mean, she did runners. do. A, she did do a lot of obviously because her main role was being stood on the market and shouting at people mm. for a long time. She obviously must have had a good friendship with a lot of the extras as well. She did. Shrimpy um, Ben Chapness posted a broken heart emoji. Oh, in relation to it. that's a nice. They will be very close because they work next to each other on the market. <laughs> yes. So who's going to extend their market? Is someone going to extend? Have two pitches? Oh, I don't think anyone's going to. Bri- <laughs> Martin could extend his pitch with well, fruit and vegetable fruit and, veg, fruit and veg and meat his fruit and vegetable is so small <laughs> it was last week that someone said that like he sells like two melons and I a know. banana i mean that's a fair half the time he gives it to free if it's male but you know, yeah well no he, yeah he always rounds it no she always rounds it up or he always mm. rounds it down doesn't he so she just gives him a note I mean, um, going back to the Easter episode, he was the only stall that was open selling fruit and veg, which was lucky for him because then Sharon was able to get her full roast dinner that day. <laughs> but I mean, M- Martin's stall, it just amazes me how small that fruit and veg stall oh, yeah. is. If you go to any supermarket, fruit and veg is almost two like, whole aisles long nowadays. Well, it's been long standing since 1985. So That's true. He's got the reputation. They're doing something right. Yeah. It's the name, family name. Locally that keeps grown. It going. Locally grown in London. Right, so we say hello to a familiar face this week with Candice Taylor, yes. Karen's sister's back for a longer stint. Last um, time she was like two episodes, now she's a full week. Well, she wasn't even an episode, she was just a snippet in an episode. Whenever yeah. Ka- When Karen, the Taylors were first introduced, they, they were, were trying to get some money from her, weren't they? When, yeah, when they rented from Loan Sharks. <laughs> mm. So Candice is back with... Um, a backpack and a climber's pickaxe. She is. Rolls out a taxi, gets a tenner from Keanu. Doesn't t- keep tells the taxi driver to keep <laughs> yeah. the change. Keanu is just the most unluckiest mug. man on earth. Mug. He? He's not a mug. He's sweet. He is. He's a mug. <laughs> so um, he also carries her bags for her. Yes, to the laundrette because mm, she's, she finds she, it hilarious that Karen works yes. in a laundrette. Well, that she, Karen has a has a job. Well, yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, she's why is she here? She's got all this. She's got all this mountain climbing gear on. I mean, f- well, yes, but <laughs> for, hot for, pink. <laughs> for what she was planning to do i feel as though she didn't have enough climbing gear but she basically reveals to karen that she is doing a charity climb of mont blanc for mm. malcolm her husband's golf club um and she's saying her intentions aren't particularly very charitable that she just wants to get a gold card membership for her husband but she couldn't go forward with it because she's scared of heights yes that old chestnut that old yeah um so she's going to hide out at the tailors to at least miss her flight, we think. No, that's she's already missed plan. her flight and someone has already messaged her to say, oh, you've noticed you've missed your flight. Mm. So she's panicking now. And, uh, she keeps being sick as well. <laughs> well, I was going to get to that a bit later, but yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she, she, on two again, whatever. <laughs> is that how throwaway the story <laughs> no. is? Yeah. But um, yeah. obviously she was sick on Monday. She was sick on Monday. We, she was in the bathroom. Well, yes. She was, she was sick on Monday, which we presumed was sick from worry, <laughs> maybe. So we kind of written it off for that. A lot of people were sick on Monday, actually, because Tina threw up too. Yeah, maybe it was a thunderstorm messing with everyone's heads. Maybe the, yeah, the weather was a bit too close. Full moon. 
full moon. Full moon and thunderstorm. Werewolves. Messes with, messes with you. Werewolves and vomit. Messes with your levels. Um, <laughs> so yeah, she's quite worried. But the Taylor kids have a plan. And Tiffany, of course, to well, help. Yes. It's, or Well, it's more Biff slash Turney. We haven't decided on which one we're going to use for Tiff. Bernadette and, and Tiff, yeah, yeah. Turney. Turney or Biff? Turney. I think that's Turney. better. Better Biff, turn afraid. I think Biff is a bit more punchy, though. <laughs> Biff. When they're angry, they'll be mm. Biff. And when it's just a gentle storyline, it's Turney. Okay. So f- in future listeners, <laughs> if we're angry with <laughs> them, it's turn. Uh, it's Biff. If we're, <laughs> if, we're, if, we're, if we're happy with them, it's Turney. So, um, yeah, Insta is what we're doing because she needs to prove that she's at the mountain. Yes. So, so they go into the park and Karen sets up a bench for her to put a leg up. So it looks like she's climbing something. <laughs> And the, she puts lots of green trees behind. Now, at first, I didn't really understand why she would have done that. But in future, th- after thinking about Green's it. Green's green. Yeah, I, yeah. After thinking about it, I suddenly realised she was obviously, because they were photoshopping it out, they needed one colour. Mm. And so it was green screen. Tiffany knows what she's doing. Tiff knows how to use Photoshop. Yeah. And she knows how to get it on Insta and get those likes. Um, and they fool the friends. They, Candice's golf club friends are all fooled by the photograph and she's getting all kinds of likes and comments yeah. and bits and pieces. So she's feeling a bit smug about herself as Candice um, and thinks that she's a bit um, invincible now and could probably get away with anything. <laughs> she so. does. Although Ellie, the head of the golf, whatever she is, like head woman, she wants a video call for all mm. the supporters. <laughs> Yes. And Candice agrees to this. She could have just said, well, I'm up the top of a mountain. The signal's not going to be great. Well, exactly. The video quality will be a bit choppy. Maybe we'll just leave it. Yeah. Or I could just make a video and send it to you via an email yeah. or something like that. If, if you know, because then you can do a bit more production values, get, See, get Bernie don't involved. Do, don't do anything live because it always goes wrong. <laughs> don't we know it? So she has like a few moments begging Karen to help again. And Karen's like, you know, we've done it once. Let's not push our luck. Let's just tell her you can't do it. Um, and then they have that, you know, big argument. Candice also says that she likes living with Karen because it's a bit like the simple life. <laughs> It's the simpler life with her and wow. him. Everyone wants her back full time, so. Yeah, well, she might end up, or she could end up moving in uh, with, with Ted. <laughs> yeah. With Ted's carer. <laughs> oh, Ted needs a carer. <laughs> Bernie's had enough. <laughs> Bernie, incidentally, was showing off her chess oh, championship medals. Yeah, this medals. is really weird. But I mean, we've not she... seen any of this on screen. Well, since they made such an emphasis about her becoming this, like, uh, manic, chess minded mm. kind of girl who's basically the best almost beat the one of the chess club who's like the bit of a showy offy yeah, posh family like seven medals you'd think they've made more of a deal of it before now it was almost a bit throwaway it was a bit like oh mm. yeah by the way i'm still winning these chess tournaments. as far as i was aware she's not done one since the one we saw but she has that's the point and mm. they're not even small medals i'm surprised karen hasn't pawned them sold them yeah. melted yeah. them melted them down <laughs> and made them like gold teeth like, yeah. Oh. but yeah so that took me a bit aback it I was, was it, obviously that, that we've not seen yeah. this. I mean, I thought they would kind of just wrap it on its head with the um, chess storyline by... And it's still there. Ha- well, by having her do a big chess <clears throat> tournament, um, mm. just her and Ted, and then that would be the end of it. But obviously Ted's not had much involvement with um, Bernie's chess life recently. No, he's having a bit of a break. Give him a break. Um, there was also a scene with Candice and Honey that was I found interesting. Yeah, so Candice goes to the Minute Mart to buy, um, because she's now on her own trying to get this fake video made. Mm. So her plan is if she buys ice, it'll make her breath, <laughs> her breath look like icy. icy. <laughs> yeah. And if she buys uh, snowflakes and gets a handful of them and throws it in the air, mm. she can fake the snow. So um, no, it's um, soap powder. Is it soap powder? You can't buy snowflakes in the Minute Mart. <laughs> no, s- soap flakes. They're soap oh, flakes. Soap fl- yeah, not you snowflakes. said snowflakes. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say, yeah. I meant to say soap, soap flakes. Yes. I apologise. Um, but anyway, and Honey was a bit off. Yeah, not like Honey, really. No. She was a bit snobby, wasn't she? She was like, she was basically saying that, oh, you're staying with Karen. She's yeah, a she's bit... a bit common, isn't mm. she? It's like, come on. But Candy stood up for her. Yeah, she did. Good. I mean, it's, I think it was to show that despite Candice and Karen's differences... Mm, they're sisters. They're family. Still, sisters, still family. Still family matters. S- still in it together. Yeah, I was like, honey, you married to Billy Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> still married to Billy Mitchell. Yeah, and they used to live in that really skank flat. They still live in that... Well, no, they, they, they live, live in the in flat the, above the... Yeah, nice the, one now, but... Well, she lives in it above the funeral. Oh, yeah, she took it. I don't, still don't get how she still lives above that flat, mm. considering that just doesn't Billy go, doesn't have the job there. They just don't explain it. Well, like, Jay should live there. That was Jay should live there. Rental problems. And then Blumen- Jay's too nice, though, isn't he? he yes, but a I nice mean, guy. a nice flat like that to himself, mm. he can get the ladies in. He keeps, <laughs> poor old Jay, he hasn't had a girlfriend since he oh, had that. Ruby Allen. I'm holding out hope. 
you keep mentioning this. This is something we'll be discussing later, <laughs> listeners. So don't you worry about I'm it. I'm teasing. <laughs> So yeah, we have that scene with Kara um, with Honey, which was a bit near. Also, Candice uses her credit card at the minute, Martin. I know. Prior after to that, all that time. she said, "Well, prior to that, she yeah. said she couldn't use her credit card because Malcolm would notice the <laughs> bill being in the UK." So that was a bit of a silly continuity error. <laughs> Maybe tut, it's part tut. of her character. She's just a bit. Don't think does she? I don't know. She seems quite smart. She mm. just panics about everything all the time, doesn't she? She just kind <laughs> of pukes up, yeah, throws up. Yeah, because then the second time she almost throws up because she's overheated by sitting in a tent <laughs> that's been constructed by Karen in the living room. Yes, and Chatton and Riley are yes. there helping. We always say that it's nice that Kathy has a, a part to play in the soap. Mm. It's nice that Chatton and Riley has a part. So to they're play. moving the tent and They've they're got doing piece... their live call. Well, bef- ten minutes before they're doing the live call, <laughs> which I thought was a bit cruel, Karen and Candy had them just sitting there rub- moving the tent for no <laughs> reason whatsoever to make it look realistic how can you what, what practicing moving a pe- piece well, maybe of they enjoyed it <laughs> their kids are allowed to have fun aren't they yeah but is that your kind of idea of fun well not mine but maybe Chad and Riley find it fun I might set Why up don't a you tent. leave them alone well I am leaving them alone I'm, I'm, I'm concerned for them I want to make sure they're happy <laughs> they're the last happy. time they did something fun was stealing Stacey's mobile phone <laughs> and then trying to good then, battery on that I was going to say the it? battery that never ended mm. Never did get that message from Jane. No. <laughs> no de- one cares. No one cares. Who deleted it? I've forgotten now. Um, not Tanya. It was um, Max. Was yes. Max? Yeah, Max. Max deleted the message. So another thing. Everyone says Max is sane. Max changed to turn a leaf. Let's never forget he deleted a help me text. Yeah. For loads of them as well. Yeah. From Jane. Whilst trying to sleep. But with Tanya sorted that out, so it's fine. She <laughs> told the truth in that half hour she was on there. In she the got cab. as much script as she could out in that <laughs> half an hour. But they filmed the whole everything in the cab because she just. <laughs> I, I'm not filming with you scum anymore. <laughs> so um, anyway, back to Candice. Yes. So they're in the tent. They're doing their live video to the lady. She's popped up in the corner. Very I was, modern. I know. I thought I was watching an episode of Hollyoaks. Mm. And then Keegan walks in and asks where his football top is. Yes. And then Karen actually moves the camera, looks at him and moves it back yeah. and then hangs up. So that ruined that illusion. Yes. Yeah, so that plan has failed. So Ellie wants to come over, the director of the golf club. She wants to see Candice before anyone else. So she comes over to Karen's house. And Candice sort of blames Karen for it somehow. Well, Candice, yeah, basically says... Um, we shouldn't have done any of this in the first place. And Karen quite rightly says, well, you wanted us to do this. It was your idea. And I actually wanted to stop you from doing this, the tent, mm. the live call. But you, anyway, Candice then says um, like, oh, you've got no friends on the square. You've not really got anywhere to live. Look at the squalor you live in. You've got no TV. You've got this <laughs> and the other. Well, the whole time burning in the background, yeah, she's like, simmering, yeah. simmering with anger. Cupboards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could see her just progressively getting red like a cartoon. She was quite rude to... um. Candice, though. I think she was within her rights to say what she no, said. She was basically saying, I'll punch you in the face. Yeah, she, no, she said she's going to punch her teeth <laughs> yeah. out. She, she wasn't even hiding. Right? She wasn't using a so metaphor or anything. Aunt. Would you say that to your aunt? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was a bit, all right, Bernadette. But, she, but, but Candice she had insulted her mum, and her mum has stuck up for her through thick and yeah, thin. Yeah. We know that Karen is a great mother, mm. and we know that perhaps Bernie one day would be a good mother too. She will. One day. With Auntie, Auntie Tiffany. In the future. Or Mummy Tiffany. <laughs> Possibly. Who knows? So we've got Benji on Twitter. Benji. He says, I'm actually gutted to see Hannah leave again. I really hope John York brings Candice back. Yeah, Lots I think of she... love for Candice, wouldn't there? I mean, it was really nice the way they ended it. It was almost like, and thank you for everything that happened this week. They mm. kind of shook hands and then left. Uh, Soap Fans says, Candice definitely needs to be a regular. Her and Karen are hilarious together. And Andrew says, they should have spent the whole EastEnders budget and sent Candice to the North Pole for real. (laughs) That seems a bit harsh. (laughs) Well, for the the matter of one storyline. Yeah, be a good week's episode, Um, wouldn't it? well, I, well, out in the wild. Do, so, sorry, do they mean that they want to get rid of Candice? No, then? they mean they should. They actually, actually film, film it. Her, yeah, in, Ma- in Mont, Mont Blanc. Blanc. <laughs> I mean, the the heady days of when the BBC used to go abroad to do like storylines. I story used to love those episodes. It was always involved all the oldies, didn't it? Yeah, like they Peggy to... and Pat always used to go to it was... Spain and stuff. It was like almost a bus tour every time, wasn't yeah. it? They still catch a bus to Calais them. and stuff like that. They were fun. So that rounds up this week's storylines. Um, and we're just going to quickly go off for one more game. It's my turn now. Uh-oh. Right, so we are playing 
Slater Family Values. Oh, I love this game. Good. This is the game where you have to link two characters that I tell you um, together in six steps. So they could be how they're related, how they work together, if someone's murdered someone, mm. someone had an affair with someone. So there's lots of steps. But everyone seems to be related somehow in Wolford. So this week, I'm asking you to link in 60 seconds. Rainy, Branning slash Cross... <laughs> slash whatever her name is to Keanu Taylor right, right okay so you've got 60 seconds right in three two one begin okay well the obvious one oh actually mm, I think Max would be too obvious I'm you've not, wasted five seconds okay shut, shut, shut. I'm not I'm not gonna say Max I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Matt uh Rainey is the daughter of Cora mm -hmm. here we go Cora has was the love oh goodness what's his name the um guy who died was um aunt That's babes right. aunt babes like fancied him and but she was he was with oh goodness stan right. stan cora was had the affections of stan right <laughs> stan was also loved by aunt babe yes um <laughs> oh gosh aunt babe 15 uh, seconds. Okay. Shush, shush, shush. Aunt Babe uh, is friends with... What's friends? Five. Oh, no. Aunt Babe is the aunt or whatever of, of Shirley or something. Out of no, time. Shirley. <laughs> oh. What's happening here? I don't know. That's I thought, a tricky one, isn't it? I thought Cora would be an easier connection <laughs> than Max, but now I'm thinking Max would have been an easier connection. Yes. Oh, anyway. What did you I mean, What I got, I got... Um, Rainey's married to Max. <laughs> Max had an affair with Stacy. Yeah. Stacy's mm, cousin is Kat. Yeah. Kat brought Haley over to help. Oh Stacey. yeah, to, to be a, like a trap. And Haley fancies Keanu. <sighs> I mean, it's simple. It was difficult because it was like a new two newish characters, but yeah, but they've got such a past between like well, not Keanu, but Rainy <laughs> has. So there were so many different links. Two fails this week. Oh yeah, God, we're both as bad as one another. It was Stan that stumbled me. <laughs> I will forget forever, not forget the name Stan. Oh, you Stan next time, shall I? No, don't. You saw what happened. No. So that was Slater Family Values. <laughs> right. So we got a little bit of extra time. Very rare for us. Yeah, I think uh, yes. So let's um, have a quick look back at some news that happened this week, and that mm. is old. An old, you've hinted at it a few times, an old <laughs> character is coming back. Louisa Lighton, who plays Ruby Allen, is returning to the square mm. after 12 years. She was last seen in Wolford in 2006. I mean, it's a strange a one, one to bring back, well, isn't yeah, it? I was like, really? Well, because she's got no real links to the no, soap. Apart from Stacey, but she has like 12 people in her house. Well, it, apparently it, the reason she left was, one of the reasons was because she kind of um, had a problem, her and Stacey had a problem, so she fleed. Mm. Um, a, a, with Sean. With Sean, yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I just think it's a weird character to bring back after 12 years. Like she was only in it for one year. Mm. Like hardly anyone remembers her. Well, she was Johnny Allen's daughter daughter yeah and she kind of when he died she kind of then took tried to take on his persona <laughs> so is is she going to become like a bit of a because they they try to introduce a few female gangster characters when mm. big mo was faking her death yeah so do you reckon there's a bit of a link there i, just, I don't know i don't know what she could possibly want to do mm. i just don't i don't understand why they brought her back they might as well just make a new character I mean, we've said this, and we've. Re I reckon there's going to be a couple new characters coming in soon as well. Mm, hope so. They've gotten rid of so many. Mm. Uh, but there's an embargo, so no one really knows what the no, story is going to be. She's like part of the biggest winter storyline. Yeah, what she's back for. Well, they bring someone in that for that be. reason. But yeah, I just think it's a bit meh. Like she had a real hard time when she was on EastEnders for that year last time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't like. They a lot of people compared her to Lacey Turner, which right. I don't think really helped her. But then um, I think now time has passed. Le Stacey has become, although she's still feisty and you know, mm, she's got the bipolar storyline. She? She's gone a bit mummy. But, while, yeah, um, but they could have just made a new character. Donna was feisty and they just got rid of her. But then I don't think I don't think that Ruby is going to be feisty. I think Ruby, I think she's even going to be a really kind, kind. of... Kind. 
well, she's either going to be a really super kind or, or she's going to be a damaged character. Hmm. Like when she's been, since she's been away, she, something's happened and she's really, because she was getting damaged while on the soap. So while hmm, she's been away, really. maybe she's got more damaged. Maybe. I just don't feel like I really hmm. care about Ruby. <laughs> no, well, time would tell. Yeah, well, exactly. It? I might be wrong. We I should. was really happy for Mel to come back and she's been quite different to well, what she used to be. <laughs> exactly. You've hit the nail on the head um, there. But yeah, I I like new characters, to be quite honest. Well, we were talking last week how there's not been any kind of new characters um, on, the, on the square. Mm, They're who all, stay. Yeah, who stay. They yeah. seem to kind of do like a, a year and then go, which happened quite a lot in the mid 2000s. So maybe we're just mm, seeing it again. Maybe. maybe Maybe they want to recall the success of that time of... EastEnders by bringing back Ruby <laughs> but, but, but it's so th- weird because she was only on it for 12 months mm. she wasn't exactly a hard hitting character but do you think I that know, do you, do you think why I, can't they bring Candice back Just bring Candice they might bring back Candice well, we don't know that's not happening I know again that could be revealed later I, again they're testing the water with Candice they saw her I mean, I'm assuming there's going to be two characters because they've actually gotten rid of Carmel which mm. obviously opens up Ruby's fee <laughs> on the show <laughs> and now donna's left so there's room maybe for a new character to replace donna i don't imagine the um louise is it louise's uh wage would be particularly very no. high though i don't think they'd be i don't think she has a lot of bargaining to say it depends how loved ruby was maybe i'm wrong i mean maybe i think she was beloved i think from, <laughs> beloved the re- ruby. <laughs> from the reaction that she's getting on twitter i think a lot of people are quite excited about her coming back mm. Um, especially, Time will tell. Yeah, especially a lot of the cast, they all seem to be chipping in by saying, oh, yeah, that'd be good, that'd be good. So we shall yeah, see. We will. I mean, there was another thing we wanted to talk about, which is Dot Cotton, the yeah. biggest mystery of Wolford at the moment. Where is Dot? Mm. Hashtag where is Dot? Last seen in February, briefly popping up for Abby's wake in the Vic. That's the last time she was seen. Mm. She's gone off to Ireland to spend some time with Dotty, but currently she is home. Oh, so in the story, she's, she's at home. <laughs> well, well, why all this stuff is happening downstairs <laughs> yeah. with Sondra and yeah. Tina. Yeah, because um, when Stacey and Martin were fooling around, they said, oh, we have to be quiet in case Doc catches us. <laughs> Dear. So it is weird. But um, it was on Wolford Web they were talking about this. And um, the person who runs Wolford Web had posted, she must have sort of contacts, mm. I don't know, but rumours. Because obviously people said, oh, she signed a new contract. So there's some reason they're not using her. And she said, apparently, the inaccurate report annoyed June Brown because she hasn't actually signed a contract. Yeah, it's widely believed that she's mm. signed a year contract. Yeah, but apparently she hasn't. And this has annoyed her because it could prevent her from getting other work. Mm, yeah. Because obviously we know she did that reality show, The oh, 100 f- Years Younger, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, and this person, she said she's done double glazing advert recently <laughs> as well. So we know that she's still able to work. There's no sign of Dot returning and I haven't had any reports of June returning to film. As she said from last night's episode, they're going to have to address her absence on screen soon. Dot went to visit Charlie and Matthew in Ireland after Abby's funeral, but is now meant to be back in Wolford. Right, so we usually get more appearances from Dot in the summer months and then June takes her annual winter break. So I wonder if maybe we won't see her now until next spring because summer's already being filmed. Mm. I mean, Dot is obviously um, one of the cornerstones of the soap. Mm. So, but as of late, she's not really had a lot to no. do. I mean, a lot of people are saying, should she come back to film her exit? Oh, most certainly she I should think do that. Yeah. yeah. The last thing, I know it's horrible, but she is like well into her 90s now. <laughs> um, but the worst thing is, is when a char- uh, the actor like dies randomly and they're still on the show mm. and then they have to sort of fit it in well it happened with frank butcher yeah he the um actor, and a few people on cory it's happened to hasn't it yeah and so they have to then somehow fit it into the show mm. in fact we were watching an old clip about that weren't we when they fitted frank's funeral yeah. into the show um she also went on to say she um that it'd be quite good for her to film an exit storyline so june brown can't sort of ho- hold the show to ransom of oh yes making the storyline she said um steve mcfadden did the same when sean o'connor was there because phil went missing for like eight months mm. didn't he? where um didn't like roxy and ronnie's yeah death um, happening. steve mcfadden was really against sean mm. o'connor's work method and stuff so. and there was also a rumor wasn't there that billy was going to be murdered off as well when mm. sean o'connor was there because yeah, they did that weird storyline of like honey and jack nearly having an affair yeah which almost disappeared. yeah but yeah, it's odd. I mean, I would prefer maybe if they just got something in line for Dot's end. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to say, I don't think there's a lot they can... Dot, 
And well, I I'm Jean- never a massive fan of Dot anyway, no. really. I said I know she's um like a long lasting character from the beginning, but she's never been like mm. one of my favourites. No. I think when they I think and June would be one of the first pe- uh, people to admit this as well. I think that there's not really a lot that you can do with Dot anymore. And Dot always seems to be one of those kind of mm. like background characters where they do something that once a week she's just reminded that dot's still there i mean now they've killed off nick as well her son Mm. um there's really very little like that was her biggest storyline throughout her time yeah on the show and i think june brown would probably appreciate they they don't have to give her a year and a year contract they could just give her a three-month contract Mm. and in those three months if done well enough they could build up to a lovely end Mm. for they could always bring back matthew Dotty, yeah, his son and maybe his mum, the I one mean, from Father Ted, <laughs> bring them back for a few months while Dot has her exit, and then that still keeps the Brannings. Like they could then become full time family. I agree with you. Like I think a they transition should... or something. Yeah, they they could use that as to their advantage. They so mm. bring Dot in, um, for what you know, June Brown in. Sorry, for one final like end to Dot bring her family or her extended family in. Mm. I like all those three characters and we've been begging for them to bring Dottie in for a long time because, yeah. you know, she'd be a really interesting character to have in the soap. Mm. Well, yeah, it is interesting. I mean, it's only a rumour. Where is Dot? Well, that's that's it. It's only a rumour, so we don't know this is a completely 100% fact. <laughs> Um, yeah, but, but it's just interesting to um, but it's strange, see that side of it. Yeah, and it's also strange that they do just keep mentioning Dot but there's never any sign of mm. her. Very odd. Anyway, onto a lighter subject. We've got the results from our poll of the week. Yeah, poll of the week. So obviously we post our poll of the week at the end of Monday's episode of EastEnders every week. Um, and we ask you to vote for a potential question or something that might happen on the soap. And this week we asked Haley half-inched Keanu's tools. <laughs> That's right. I wonder where you're going there. <laughs> but what else will she steal from him? And uh, we obviously had comments, but the four main choices were his dignity, his job, his heart, or Bronson. <laughs> and thank you again, as always, for everyone who voted. And thank you for everyone who likes and retweets it as well, so it gets a bit more out in the open. So do you know what you the, the uh, people believed would be half-inched from Keanu <laughs> by, by Hayley? I don't know if I'd like to say. Um, obviously, his hat was half-inched as well. Oh week. my goodness, yes. But we didn't know that was going to happen. Um, what were the first two options? So it was either his dignity, his job, his heart, or Bronson. His dignity. <laughs> his dignity. Um, his, his, there was the second favourite, his dignity, at 25%. Mm. The least favourite was Bronson. Good. At 5%. I mean, it would be cruel if, she did, yeah. if they did a storyline where she stole Bronson. <laughs> uh, next after that is his job, at 15%. I'm, I mm. thought that that might be a possible yeah. one as well, but um, no. She's into she, her taxis now. But no, she's not. She's into the not. What's she? Oh, yeah. That's I don't know a what point. she's into. Well, yeah. What's she going to do? Is she going to be like um, cats, like I don't know, right hand girl when she's like driving the black cab? <laughs> have to wait two years. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a really slow burn <laughs> if they're going to keep that one going. It'll always be mentioned in the background, won't it? It'll be cat like, oh, I've just got him mm. from doing my test. Um, no, it's his heart. Fifty-five percent of you said his heart is going to be taken by Haley. Love is in the air. I mean. Summer. It is building up to that, isn't it? Let's it be is. honest with you. Carrie said his virginity. <laughs> um, and we actually joined in on that one and posted a picture of poor old Ingrid. <laughs> <laughs> That's already I mean, gone, I'm afraid. What would Ingrid Long say? Gone. I know, but what would Ingrid say to this relationship? I know, going from lovely, angelic Ingrid, mm. blonde flowing hair to Haley, like polar opposites. So, um, as always, you can find our poll of the week and any comments that we post during EastEnders when it's broadcast in the UK on our Twitter, which is at EastEnders Week. Um, you can also message us or comment on anything that we write. We love hearing your messages and comments and we may read them out on the show as well. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, which is at EastEnders Weekly Podcast. Very long. <laughs> Type all that in and we'll pop up. It says what it is. It, it does. It does exactly what it says on the tin. And on there, we also have uh, pictures and links to our podcast, which you can listen to on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, YouTube, or any of your favorite podcast apps. And of course, you can email us, which is eastendersweekly at gmail.com. As I say, if you have any comments or questions or just want to say hello, you know, do it. Yeah. Why not? Why not indeed? Mm. Um, I was just going to say, uh, yes. can I just quickly borrow um, your brand new premium hat, please? 
I said, I've looked at it. it when you really got nice. it this morning, I hope you're not, you know, here we go. <laughs> Just clean my computer screen. Thanks. That's disgraceful. 